Now for a deeper look at China's electric car industry, I spoke with Levi Tillman. He's managing partner at Valence Strategic and author of The Great Race, The Global Quest for the Car of the Future. I started by asking him about the progress of China's electric vehicle market in the last five years. Well, China is really a remarkable story. If you looked at the China electric vehicle market three, four years ago, you would really have to say it was dead in the water. But that all started to change in 2014 when the Chinese government instituted a new set of policies that required that local governments purchase a certain percentage of their fleets as electric vehicles. In 2014 was when that policy started and uh, the progression in their EV market over 12 months was incredible. In January, they sold about 600 electric vehicles over the entirety of China. And in December, they sold more than 17,000. So a huge, huge jump in just 12 months' time. So we did see that by having that one policy for government vehicles, it actually spilled over into the public. That's right. That's right. And so um, what the Chinese government did is they made it clear to local governments that this was a priority. And so on top of that larger central government policy, you had local policies that were also very powerful in incentivizing buyers. Um, one of those policies was that electric vehicles were allowed either free registration in some major cities, or in other major cities, there were carve-outs for the number of license plates that were allotted to electric vehicles. Of course, the reason why this is important is that because of massive congestion in cities like Beijing and Shenzhen and Shanghai, the government has decided to reduce the number of vehicles that they allow to be sold in those cities every year. And so electric vehicles are getting a big slice of that pie in some cities. And what are some of the other incentives that would perhaps appeal to drivers who maybe have not looked at electric vehicles and are thinking, I'm not sure about the infrastructure and things that are in place. What sort of incentives are there? Sure. So one big incentive is a financial incentive. Um, there is a financial incentive of about 60,000 RMB that is the maximum that you can get from the central government. And many cities add another 60,000 RMB to that. And so when you, when you put that all together, that's about $16,000 US. That's a lot of money, and it makes a big difference. Um, in some places, electric vehicles are not taxed or have reduced taxes. Um, there are also some other interesting incentives that are, are really quite clever that the Chinese government has employed. Um, one of them has to do with commuting days. In order to reduce congestion, the Chinese government only lets car drivers take their vehicles in every other day to the city. And the way they do that is if you have an even number license plate, you get to go in on one day, and an odd number license plate, you get to go in on another day. Well, electric vehicles can go in any day they want. And that's actually a huge incentive for a lot of people. So definitely a lot of motivation there. Mm -hmm. Now, obviously, when it comes to putting these things in place, all this infrastructure, it costs money. And in terms of the balance between public and private spending when it comes to research and development, who's really taking the lead there? Well, right now, I think that China is in an interesting place. They've certainly gotten to scale. Last year was a huge year for the Chinese electric vehicle market. China is now the biggest market for electric vehicles in the world. They sold about 180,000 sedans that are electric in China, which compares to a little bit less than 120,000 in the United States. So, so all of that has been private sector development effort. But in terms of nitty gritty R&D, China still lags behind a little bit. And in January, when I was at the EV100 conference, which is sort of this forum for, for guiding automotive innovation in China, one of the big topics of discussion is how to move China to a global level of quality and how to stimulate research and development in some of the more fundamental aspects of electric vehicle technology. And in terms of making these brands more global, there's also some partnerships with foreign companies. How do you see that developing? Well, it's, it's an interesting story. Um, there are players like General Motors that work with the Shanghai Automotive Industrial Corporation um, and, and are developing new brands of electric vehicle for the indigenous, China, indigenous Chinese market. Most of the Chinese market um, is, is actually taken up by domestic brands. And the reason for that is that the incentives are only applied to domestically built vehicles. Um, and they have actually fairly stringent requirements on certain parts of intellectual property that have to be owned by the local company for an electric vehicle 
to receive government subsidies. So you know, 95 plus percent of the electric vehicles that are being sold in China are being built by domestic companies. However, there are some foreign actors like Tesla that really want to get into the market in China in a big way. And so you're seeing a lot of exploration of new kinds of partnerships, new kinds of research and development partnerships um, that would, would involve a collaboration between foreign companies and Chinese domestic manufacturers.